The mind is not your friend. After all, what kind of a friend tells you to beat yourself up when things don't go your way or you don't get what you want? And what kind of a friend tells you that you need to focus on all these things that you got to worry about? And what kind of a friend has you lusting and searching for happiness out there instead of taking all of your joy from within? Now, does this mean that you have to go to war with your mind? Absolutely not. Just love it. But stop listening to that thing. Welcome to The Power of Quiet, showing you a part of yourself that is absolutely infinite, where you have the ability to have, do, and be whatever you want. And this part of you, when you recognize it, you recognize in yourself that you are the creator of everything around you. Now, you've probably heard stuff like this before. But the difference in what we do here is we don't just talk about this, we show you. We show you how to experience it. See, the stuff that we're talking about, the mind, it might kind of get it intellectually, but whatever the mind gets, it will never, ever, ever understand at all. It's like a very superficial understanding of what the mind gets. And unfortunately, a lot of us, we rely on our minds so much that even when we go down a spiritual path, we try to gain knowledge and understanding of what it is that we're doing on this path. And in trust in our mind, it gets us derailed and we never complete that path. So, like I said, what we do here is we show you just step by step how to get out of your mind and get that experiential understanding and the experience to demonstrate and really prove out that you can have, do, and be whatever you want. Not just say it, but do it. Like my teacher said, it's not what you say, it's what you can do. And that's what makes all the difference. So if that's what you're into and you're new to this channel, then hit subscribe. You're going to love what we show you here. And if what I'm saying here resonates with you, then let me know by hitting like down below. So I want to jump into this topic. It came to mind because recently I just came back from doing a live weekend class in Cluj, Romania. And this is the first time I did an in-person class since before the pandemic. You know, uh, since that time, they've all been over Zoom calls. And it was just a great experience, just going back in person. And it reminded me how powerful it is when we actually get together in person. Not the physical thing so much, but actually getting to all together in the same room where <clears throat> there's no other distractions. And we're there for long periods of time focusing and doing this work that's where all that power is. So yeah, it's a really wonderful uh, experience getting back into that. And we're going to be doing more. In fact, next year, we're going to be doing a nine day retreat in Romania. So stay tuned for details about that. But when I first announced this class earlier this summer, that we're going to be doing a class in Romania, there was somebody who messaged me, a young guy that said, Oh, I just found out that you're doing a class. I know you don't have the details posted yet, but as soon as you do, let me know. Let me know when and where, and I'm going to be there. And this is somebody who had been to a number of classes, probably like three or four classes plus a retreat or two. And he started coming when he was very young. He was still in college, and now he's in his residency and being a medical doctor. And when he said, I'm coming, he didn't ask, well, what is the class going to be about? What exercises are you going to do? 
<laughs> it, it didn't matter what we were going to cover in this class. He just knew it was going to be a good thing and he was going to be there. And so when he showed up, he made a beeline straight towards me and he was so excited to share you know, all the wonderful things that had evolved in his life from releasing. And he said, I want to share all this with you. In fact, you know, if you want to film me, I'd be happy to you know, share this with others because releasing has just made all the difference in my life. You know, my relationships, my work, and, and other businesses that I've been creating along the way in these past few years. Releasing has just made all of that glorious. And I'm happy to share that with you. In fact, I'll just share a really short clip of some of the things that he was talking about, about the difference that releasing has made in his life. Hi, my name is Bogdan, and I want to say something about releasing and power of quiet. Uh, for the last five years, I'm releasing almost every day. And uh, before that, I had a life full of uh, bad emotions, bad feelings like uh, anger. I was an angry person. I was a person that was looking for answers outside of me. By releasing, I gain a lot of uh, objectives. I, I became more happy and more uh, relaxed in my life. Uh, the moments of anger uh, almost disappeared. Like, for example, before I was angry almost every day. Uh, now I get angry maybe one time at six months or something like this. And when I do it, I immediately realize and I'm starting releasing again. Um, in my business life, uh, everything got better because I uh, release even on uh, my objectives. And by releasing only, I see things are working out for me and for my business. Uh, now I want to talk about my relationship. Uh, before Power of Quiet, I didn't have, uh, let's say, I had many girlfriends, but uh, never that kind of good relationship that I feel like, like home, let's say. I started releasing uh, on why I can't have a girlfriend in a serious relationship, and I released a lot and a lot of old beliefs, and uh, I finally met someone. It's like... Uh, for me, it's like I created that person, like after releasing and always releasing and releasing, the person just appeared like from nowhere. And I'm having an almost five year relationships, relationship, which is very, very great. I am very thankful and very um, happy with my relationship. Uh, I can tell you that even spiritually, I found something great after releasing. Uh, I, find, I found myself, I found the quiet, I found that place from where I can create without being bothered by anything. Because now I feel like I'm creating everything by myself and, and I'm not just a um, victim of, some, of something that's coming towards me. Now it's not just Bogdan that has this attitude and passion where it doesn't matter what the class is about. As soon as there's a class, they're like, I'm there. I'm showing up. Because they recognize that it's the work that does it. And that it's just the constant releasing and digging out and dismantling the ego that frees you. And they're determined to keep working, keep digging it out. And they see the results. They see the same real world gains show up in their life that have no other explanation other than that they come from releasing. And they recognize that, they recognize the goodness of it, and that's why they keep showing up again and again and again. There's lots of people like that. And they're the ones that are really moving forward down this path. And I point this out because this passion, this attitude, it's a stark contrast to the way a lot of other people approach releasing. And I hear this a lot when announcing a new class, either directly or indirectly, where people ask, well, what's the class about? What exercises are you going to work on? Oh, oh, I did that last time. Well, let me know when you're going to do something new, something different, either a new topic or show me 
a new way to release. Like a fifth or sixth super duper way to release. Right? Then I'm interested. Then I'll show up. Now, the problem with this attitude is that we're just listening to the mind. We're listening to that mind tell us, oh, I know what that's all about. I've done that before. Right? I need something new. I need new information to chew on. Right? That's old stuff. But it's kind of like walking into a yoga class and looking around saying, oh, you're doing sun salutations? Oh, let me know when you do some new yoga. Then I'll be interested. When it's the basic yoga that really takes you deep when you go deep into it. And so, like these same people, they say, well, oh, you're going to do those basic exercises like attachments and aversions to disapproving of yourself, attachments and aversions to worrying. I've done this before. I've done those like two or three times already. When are you going to show me some super duper way of going into the mind and finding traumas or programs, ways of thinking, you know, archetypes of thinking that I can see and it'll blow my mind and I can dismantle it. It doesn't work like that. You see, you take these simple exercises like attachments and aversions to disapproving of yourself or worrying. And it's like, well, I've done that before. But are you still beating yourself up sometimes? Are you still worrying about things? Now, you're probably doing it less than you've done before because you've done this a few times and you recognize, well, yeah, I see the benefit in that. I got some results, but I'm still doing it. Well, it's a long habit and that's why you need to stick with it. Keep doing these exercises. See, some of these basic exercises, I've done them hundreds of times. I've done them by going to probably more than 200 basic classes, you know, fundamental releasing classes, doing them at retreats. I've done at least a hundred retreats that I've facilitated myself and I've gone to that my teacher has facilitated. And every time I do these exercises, I just pull out more and more of this habit, of this way that I've kind of cemented in how I beat myself up and all the ways I do it. And first, I might pull it out a little bit superficially, but as I keep persisting, that superficial stuff eventually is gone. Those initial thoughts and feelings, those initial stories that come up in my mind that I release on, they don't play in my mind anymore. Now, then I go deeper and I find deeper tendencies you know, deeper feelings, deeper stories, right? More ingrained stuff. And I bring that up and I start working on that. And I keep working on those, doing the same exercises again and again. And eventually those disappear. And eventually, throughout all of it, through the persistence of it, I just don't do that stuff anymore, right? That worry, either it doesn't come up or when it does, I catch it just like that. And drop it. I don't get caught up in that ego and worrying about something that I have no control over instead of focusing on what I really want. So the point of this is that the mind does not understand releasing. It will tell you that it does. Oh, I know what that's all about. I've done that before. But it's lying to you. It just has an intellectual understanding. But release in itself is something that is purely experiential. And we gotta watch that tricky mind. See, these same people that say, oh, okay, I know what that's all about. Oftentimes, these are the same people that say, I'm releasing all the time. I release every day. And either they're kidding their, themselves or they're lying, like they don't do it at all, or what they're talking about is maybe 
if they feel some pressure in their stomach or chest or they sense that they're a little bit bothered, they might open up and let a little bit of it go. And then they call that releasing, right? Just letting a little bit of that energy go. Okay, yeah, it feels a little bit better. And then that's it. They don't dig any deeper than that. And they call that releasing, but really what they're doing is they're just skimming the surface. It's like they're just water skiing over the negativity instead of focusing and digging in. And this is why these same people that say, oh, I'm releasing all the time, they don't really have the results. Like they're not able to do the butt system, to just sit on their butt and get everything they want by releasing only. And then they have all these rationalizations about why they're not doing the exercises, why they're not working on goals, all these excuses and so on, but they call themselves a releaser. They're not releasing. They're just listening to the mind. And the mind has completely derailed them from the whole path. Now, this isn't to point fingers at anybody or make anybody wrong because we all do this, including me. And we do this regularly. <laughs> you know, even when we get really good, even those of us who show up again and again, we, st we can still fall into this trap, you know, in our day-to-day -day life of thinking I'm releasing rather than actually releasing, actually letting it go. And the difference is, is number one, you know it when you really release. You don't have to wonder about it. You know the goodness of it. See, it's all right there in the six steps. First of all, a lot of times when we're not fully into it, we're not totally into step one. We're not about imperturbability. Maybe we say we are, but we say it and then turn right around and go right into wanting something, lusting after something, or trying to get people's attention, get people's approval, let them know how important we are, showing ourselves off, taking selfies, all that stuff. <laughs> we say we're imperturbable, but we don't act like it. Or step four, make releasing constant. Right? So maybe we do it for like five minutes in the morning or we do it when something really bothers us. Okay, I'm going to release a little bit so I'm not bothered anymore. Then we go right back to suppressing. We go right back to listening to our mind. So when we say, oh, I'm releasing all the time, we're not doing step four. We're not making it constant. If we're really honest with ourselves, we're only releasing maybe 1% of the time and then 99% of the time being an ego. Or step six, recognizing that every time we release, we get happier and lighter and freer. And if we release continually, even doing the simple exercises, digging in, working on goals, doing the attachments and aversions, even the basic ones, basic exercises, basic topics, we see those results each and every time we do it. And we know we're moving in the right direction. And we know that our mind is getting quieter, that we are in charge. We're not a slave to our thinking. We're not being run by a computer program. We're freer. We're lighter. We're happier. We're feeling imperturbable. We know we're imperturbable. So, Everything right there is laid out in the six steps. And the mind doesn't need to know anything about that. See, another thing that I see happen is you know, some people will either watch a video like this or they'll read a book about releasing. Maybe they'll even take a class. Or maybe they take a couple of classes, but they look at like what goes on and they say, oh, well, that's easy. 
You're just asking some basic questions. I can do that. I'm going to go out and teach this now. I, I understand all this about releasing, and now I'm going to show others how to do it. And I see a few people like this, and they're saying the words, but they're just words. And that's why my teacher, Larry, see, over the years, lots of people came up and said, hey, I want to be a teacher. And Larry was very selective about who he allowed to be teachers. The first qualification is, is can you do the butt system, right? Can you demonstrate how released are you? Because you can't show somebody how to release if you're not a really good releaser yourself. It doesn't work. Otherwise, you're just throwing words at people. And I, I've seen some videos of people do this, and they're saying the words, but it's very superficial. You can just see and feel the difference. And again, it shows that they're listening to the mind. The mind says, oh, I know what this is all about. I know what that is. I just listened to so-and-so do it. I can repeat that. But the thinking about it and the experience of actually doing it are two different things entirely. It's kind of like if you see somebody do Tai Chi, like a Tai Chi master, and you go, oh, well, that looks easy. They're just moving their arms in slow motion. They're doing this and this and all that. Oh, I can do that. I can move in slow motion like that. Now I'm going to be a Tai Chi teacher. But there's a big difference between somebody <laughs> who's mentally has a concept of it versus somebody who has done it through and through where there is no mind there. They're just totally present in the process and they're deep in the process. And that's a whole different experience, right? So the main point here is that releasing, it's something that you do. It's something that is 100% experiential. The mind, no matter how many books that it's read, no matter whatever it's witnessed, and no matter how many talks from Lester and other masters that it's listened to, and it says, oh, I know what that's all about. I know what Lester's talking about. And no matter how many good things that it tells you, right, it tells you all sorts of wonderful things, the mind will never, ever know. And that's the point. Stop listening to your mind. Be who you are. And never listen to that mind ever again. You don't need it. See, right now, just pay attention to what's going on in your mind right now. Just watch. Just observe it. What is it talking about? Right? Maybe it's trying to figure out what I'm talking about. Maybe it's trying to compare your own experiences, your own knowledge. Maybe it's trying to compare and judge or figure it out. But whatever your mind is doing, just watch. Just watch it. Watch. And as you're watching your mind, also just watch the moment that you're in right now as you're watching your mind. And be in this moment. As you're doing it, you can watch your breath. Just observe yourself right now, breathing in and breathing out and in and out. And as you're watching your breath, your mind still might be making noise, still might be knocking on the door there. Hey, what about me? I'm also important. But just watch it. Watch what it says. And you don't have to take it so seriously. Just watch. And notice what else is in this moment. Notice the temperature that you're feeling on your skin. Is it warm, cold, humid? dry. 
I don't judge any of it. Just watch. Notice. Observe. And again, watch your mind. Maybe it has some things that it's frustrated about. Maybe there's things that it's constantly worried about. It worries about them every single day. And whatever that is, and no matter how important that mind tells you those things are, just watch. Don't take any of it so personally. Don't place any value on it just right now in this moment. Just watch. 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 The same as right now as watching your breath. Just watch. And notice how that mind tells you, hey, I'm your friend. I'm here to give you information, to guide you. I'm here to help you figure things out. And why do you need to figure anything out about the path or about freedom? Either you're there or you're not there. All this need to figure things out is, it's worrying that you might not know it later. So if I can just get some information about it and hold on to that information, then at any time I can access that information and know freedom. But that's not knowing freedom. That's not knowing the bliss of being free. It's just listening to your mind. And by the way, who's that mind talking to right now? See, that mind's talking to you, but who are you who it's talking to? And watch that. Now, is that thing that the mind is talking to, if you can call it a thing, does it have a face? Does it have a name? Does it have a body? Is it noisy? Or is it just silently present? And that's what that mind is talking to right now. Notice the difference. There's the mind, and then there's you, who it's talking to. And that part of you, that's just you, that's the unlimited you, that's the free you, that's the happy you. Everything else, where there's problems and emotions and worries and thinking, that's not you, that's the unreal you. That's just a sound that's talking to you. And it'll tell you sweet things, whisper in your ear about how it knows all about the method and Lester and freedom. But as long as you're listening to it, you're not there. And it's only by doing these exercises, by showing up in classes, not just water skiing over the surface, but showing up focused, ready to dig, and participating fully that you dismantle that ego. And it's a determination to stay with it until it's all done. That's why in Lester Six Steps, step two, it says, I decide to use the method so I can be imperturbable. Not 15% imperturbable, not 67% imperturbable, but all the way. I'm going to be imperturbable about beating myself up so that I don't do it anymore. It's just no longer a program running in my head. I'm not going to worry about things anymore. I have no need to want or desire anything. And I can prove it by having anything, by the mere thought of it. 
That's where a free one is at. And that free one is right there, right now. But you've got to stop listening to that mind. So I know that some of the things I've said here might sound a little provocative or even self-serving. It's like talking about the value of showing up at classes. But all you have to do is look at the results that you're getting, look at what you're doing, and look at your determination. Do you really want to get to where Lester's at? Right? He's pointing the way. And do you want to just get there 10% of the way of where Lester's at? Or do you really want to experience fully you know, everything that he's sharing and be there yourself? Have his knowledge be your knowledge. And what would you be willing to do in order to get there? That's the key. So don't let your mind lie to you and tell you that it knows. It doesn't. But you do. And with Lester's method, you got the perfect, simple tool to dismantle that ego so you can be there. So do it.